Hello, the angels. This is the weekly general reading for the period of uh, Sunday, April 4th through the 10th, Saturday to come. Um, we're starting with the dice and romantic dinner, no, and spend money. Spirit says sex. 29, which is spiritual partnership, and email. The cards will begin with the page of wands in Aries, maybe Leo or Sagittarius or someone likened to those traits or attributes. Page of wands um, is often about uh, work. Pages bring news of, of opportunity um, often, and this one tends to bring news of like there's a job opportunity or some opportunity to make money or perhaps to travel. Wands are about movement. Another thing the Page of Wands means is that something that we started a long time ago, we'll be picking it back up. We'll be seeking to, to finish this thing from our past. It may involve a relationship, uh, likely romantic or business. It could be any kind of relationship, but those were the, would be the, the strongest two that I would say if it's not a romantic, then maybe it's a business partnership. Again, this can be about work and or travel. Maybe it's a travel companion. The Hierophant also about partnerships, uh, contracts, commitments. This too can be business, romantic, different things like that. And we're signing some sort of contract, we're going into business together, or we're entering a commitment romantically, or we're gonna start dating, give it a whirl, or get back together. And what's allowing us to do this now is that something is completed. Some cycle that was going on before that maybe prevented us from completing this thing before we got distracted or whatever happened and an obstacle got put up in front of us and we were unable to, to fight it. Whatever the situation was, that's come to an end. Something's come full circle. Some, some cycle is ending. Um, or has ended, and we're going to be moved into something, you know, into new energy, newer and better. And so that's what's allowing for the opportunity that we're seeing now. The world is always a fire energy for me. It feels like the card feels like warm and like fire when I pick it up. Um, and because it's Major Arcana, I think this is why. I never really att attributed it to any particular sign of the fire element, um, it's more like Mars or Jupiter, you know, it's that, it's a karmic fire energy. And then again, we have the wands, which is representative of fire. And speaking of fire and not having been able to fight something off before, we have the nine of wands. So this is like, you know, I, I feel like I don't have anything left in me and the universe saying, or God saying like, or your inner self, your higher self saying, yes, you do keep going. And so you kept going. And then again, a cycle is ending now. So there'll be a reward for that. Next card is in reverse. It is the queen of swords. A queen of swords may be involved or may have been involved. This may have been an obstacle, especially the queen of swords in reverse is often like a, like a mother in, or a mother-in-law, somebody that's like butting into your life and getting in the way, um, so it could be that, something like that. Queen of Swords is a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, so someone likened to those traits or attributes. I'm going to put these in random places now. Who's the knight and the king now of cups? Queen of Pentacles. I'll do one more. It was justice, but then the. Oh well. It wasn't meant to be, but I, op I first opened to and saw justice just now.
And that brings us to more wands. It's the two of wands, which is also about partnership, um, often romantic, especially when you're talking about the tarot. The two of wands is the twin flame or divine union or soulmate card of the tarot. And there's justice. Isn't that funny how that happens? Justice, of course, represents the planet Venus, um, ruler of the signs of Libra, which this card represents, uh, as well as Taurus and Gemini. She is in reverse, though. I am now going to pull six cards that will um, more directly or most directly represent us in different aspects of our life this week. So again, overall energy is the two of wands. You just see me turn the cards around. The first card is the page of pentacles so this one will most directly represent us like in a general sense surrounding energy so our close friends family members co-workers or our situations with them queen of cups upright uh, work and finance strength love and relationship ace of wands so that message that the page was bringing, it's about the new opportunity, here it is. Remember I said it was likely about romantic relationships or a business partnership. Uh, physical health, nine of pentacles, very nice. And spiritual health, 10 of swords, interesting. There we go. Can you see all those? I think so. All right, let's go. So we're going to start with the two of wands, our overall energy. And this card is primarily about balance uh, this week is what I'm feeling. Um, in every area of your life where you can like sort of pay attention, are you in balance? Like, are you eating enough? Are you eating too much? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you sleeping too much? This is carrying over from last, this from last week, I think. I think I said the same thing last week. Um, maybe with this card, maybe maybe with something else. I don't know. But it feels like deja vu. Um, anyway, the uh, Two of Wands also, as I mentioned before, is a card of partnership. And in the tarot, it is a very special card. It's the Twin Flame card. It's the Divine Union card or Soulmate card. Um, but if this can also, this is the general reading. This can also be something, um, some sort of personal partnership, friendship, platonic, uh, perhaps, and, or a business partnership as well. Um, also it's, in, it's important to remain mindful of like give and take being required or necessary in all successful relationships. So no matter what kind of relationship this card may be about for you, if at all. You know, there's 50-50 or 100-100, however you want to think about it. But each person has to be able to um, receive and to give and to compromise and, and meet the other halfway and all of that. If you're feeling out of balance um, in terms of a relationship, oh, you know, so far, know when this card shows up that things are about to get better. So it's a, it's a positive, it's good news um, for you. Uh, in terms of work... Things falling into place, maybe in like weird or unusual ways that you hadn't thought about, but all of a sudden things get a lot better. If you're like looking for a job, then it could be that you're about to find like the perfect fit for you, the soulmate for you in terms of a job. Um, don't let anybody like get in your way and like not like make you, um, what's the word I want to, uh, not distract you, but like. You know, like you, you got your rhythm going, you know, and they sort of like, like yeah, like knock you off your, like your stride, you know, um, be careful of that. And there could be, I guess, like some sort of partnership in terms of business too, like maybe you know, investing with somebody or going in together with somebody in a business in terms of love. Again, more balance, more equal, more equity, um, more reciprocity, give and take, sharing ideas with, the, with one another and really paying attention to the other's perspective. If you're single and looking or somebody's interested in you, 
this card asks that you give them a chance. And again, it could be a soulmate. It could be a twin flame relationship or divine union. Um, who knows? But that's what the card means. In terms of um, our finances, again, there's more fairness and equity and equality there. And if you're um, like in a position to maybe a business deal, right? So you have, you, you're negotiating, you have an opportunity to put a number on a little piece of paper and slide it to the person across the table, like in the movies, right? Um, or, you know, you're applying for a job and they say like, how much are you looking for? Don't, when this card shows up um, in terms of finances and you're looking for a job, don't be afraid to like ask for what you're truly or honestly, genuinely worth. That doesn't mean like don't inflate something ridiculously, um, just for the sake of it either, you know, you got to be balanced in that too. So it's like what you're truly worth, um, not any more, not any less. And it's very possible, even in these economic times, that you'll be pleasantly surprised um, with by how much, you know, you can achieve doing that and how often you'll actually get it, those of you who try that. Um, health too, again, this is about balance and, and balancing chakras maybe uh, energy work making sure that everything is flowing properly um could be about exercise getting into shape and things but also it's a pretty positive card like you know um it kind of means like you're already in better shape than you may feel like you are you know and spiritually um again it's <laughs> this is a card of very strong spiritual partnership um up to and including Twin flame relationships even represents twin flame relationships in the tarot. So um, when it shows up in terms of spirituality, it can mean like a particular spiritual relationship, um, you know, with one other person could be really like helpful to you now on your path. But you're always also like in a spiritual partnership, so to speak, with yourself too. And we have to remember that like first and foremost. And then we allow other people in like to share ourselves with them. And then again, that's where the reciprocity and equity and equality need to come in because they need to um, do the same, like, you know, equally. Um, and you got to remember to take time and, and energy and space for yourself as well. All right, so that is the Two of Wands, our overall energy. Moving on to the card or the other card that will most directly represent us this week is the Page of Pentacles in reverse. Um, for some of us, this can mean that a, an, a Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn may be particularly significant um, to us this week. For me, it would be, if it was one of the signs, based on the fact that it's the Page, more so a Virgo, like maybe Virgo first, then Taurus second, then Capricorn third. Um, I would say Taurus second because Venus is so active right now and she is Taurus's ruler. So I put them second for that reason. Um, Virgo because, you know, pages for me, at least in my head, you know, they are the more youthful and, and um energetic, like a mutable sign. And Virgo is the mutable sign of, of the earth element. So more importantly than that, um, when this card is reversed, it can mean that we, we're, we're distracted. We're very easily distracted right now. We need focus. Um, in a general sense, it can mean like we have to put more effort in. Like we either have, like we have to work harder to keep our, our, our mind from like wandering and from our energy too from like being used in ways that are useless, um, not beneficial to us, not for our highest good, you know? Um, if you can take a break and like even like recharge over the weekend, I, I've seen a lot of weekend away this week and, and you know, Sunday is Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday, whatever one wants to call it, if anything. So maybe there's an opportunity, some people are still on spring break and different things for you to like chill. Um, and if that's possible with this card, it's a good time to do that. Uh, at work, it can mean you have like a super heavy workload 
And again, you got to try to remain focused on your work and not be so easily distracted. Um, if there's somebody that you can ask for help, then, you know, you should. Um, and you should avoid voluntarily taking on more than what you're able to do. In love, you could be distracted and bored and have a wandering eye um, with this card. And you, if you want to keep your relationship, if you have one, then it's a good time to you know, maybe have a conversation and or to do something that puts the oomph, right, the excitement, the spark, um, the spotlight back on your relationship and your partner as opposed to this boredom that you're feeling in this wandering eye. However, never mind, I'll get to that later. Um, <laughs> I'll save it. I'll, I'll remember. I'm making a mental note. If you're single... Um, and you're looking or, you know, you see somebody of interest or somebody lets you know they're interested in you. It's probably going to be mutual, but at the same time, neither one of you is really ready to like truly settle down yet. Maybe you're, you're recently out of something else, um, or for whatever reason, you're just not really ready. But that's okay. It's a, it's a right to have, you know, have somebody to spend some time with and have some fun with and, and see where things, you know, can go and develop. Sometimes we just got to be patient. You know, earth signs, it's that grounded, patient energy anyway. Um, so they might not mind as much. You know, just hope you're not an air sign. <laughs> right? Because we, we, we're fast. We're on the move. Um... Moving on, speaking of being on the move, or is there anything else from, from this section? It's really, again, in, in every area, uh, spirituality too. Just like a feeling of boredom, even in your spirituality, like wanting to do something better, you know, think um, hermit, right? So maybe introspection on like, what else can I do? I'm looking for something higher or think hierophant, speaking of higher and the energy of Taurus, um, you know, trying to get and maybe uh, refreshed in traditional values or since it's in reverse, tossing out traditional beliefs and values and looking into something else uh, could definitely be what you're interested in doing right now in terms of spirituality. So I will move on to the Queen of Cups and our surrounding energy. And this is one of the most, you know, it represents representative of one of like the most loving energies or loving cards uh, in the tarot. The, uh, she is most directly a Scorpio, but can be a Cancer or a Pisces or someone just likened to, you know, the traits and attributes of a water sign that's not even a water sign at all um, is very, very possible. And um, again, this card is about love, emotion. Uh, it's a very nurturing energy that it represents, like a motherly energy uh, in a really positive way and wanting to take care of everybody else um, except for like a mother maybe forgetting to take care of yourself possible uh, and it can represent an actual person in your life maybe a water sign maybe not um, and if it does more likely a, a woman a female but doesn't have to be that either um In a general sense, somebody could be, since this is, rep it's in the placement of like our friends, uh, close friends, family members, co-workers and things, somebody could be coming to our aid, right? They might be a friend, a family member, a co-worker or a romantic interest or a romantic partner. Um, not, not, I don't, not a stranger. Uh, this is somebody from one of those groups. And they're just going to be very supportive to us in whatever area this is that we that we need. So it could be help at work. Remember, I said some of us may be overwhelmed at work and distracted. So she could come through with that. Um, this may be the one person that you have a spiritual connection with, or that is beneficial to you to to talk to or to get some support from. Maybe it's somebody older. You have a you know a, an enlightening conversation with you know with their wisdom or whatever um it's a positive energy so nothing to to fear in this area even in terms of finances and um and work you know it's like 
it, it's about good news first and foremost. So let me get that out of the way. But it also says like what like whatever's going on in your life, this card shows up to still say like, you know, feel free to take a break and and you know feel positive about life and about um the different types of abundance and, and prosperity in your life. And that even that kind of thinking, that kind of vibe that attracts the other stuff that we need too, you know? So it's like, if your head's in the right place, like I think therefore I am, you know, if your head's in the right place, then it becomes your reality, that will become your reality as well. Um, so I will move on specifically to work in finance and strength is another one of these cards that is like positive this one, especially like, it doesn't matter if it's upright or in reverse or whatever, or what area of your life it is, it's general, it's love, it's work, it's whatever. Strength is a positive card. Um, but with work, it means things are going well. If you're looking for work, again, something is very possible to be like the perfect fit for you. It's your skill set. It's, you know, where your passions lie. You have a natural um, aptitude for whatever this thing is. It, you know, it's like the, it's like a soulmate job um that is you know like right around the corner for you and again you could be really surprised about um the response that you get for asking for what you're worth this card means that as well and in terms of finances and specifically again it's positive i mean strength is the ability to face any and everything that comes your way and to conquer it right to do well that's what the strength is about uh if it involves a person, this scenario, like somebody else, an outside support or helper, they may be a Leo. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be, but of course the strength does represent the sign of uh, Leo in the tarot. Somebody may be getting ready to buy something big, like a big ticket item. Um, maybe even like a home, which... If you can afford it, I mean, this is a good time. Like the rates, mortgage rates and refi and home equity, it's like 4% um, on average these days. You know, the rate is really down. So if you can do it, it's a good time. But this card also warns, even though it's wonderful, like don't borrow more than you feel like you can afford to comfortably repay. It doesn't, it's guiding, guiding you away from, getting yourself into trouble but it's also saying you know hey this is a good time to make a business deal right <laughs> um maybe it's you going into partnership with the bank right or a contract with the bank that could be with the two of wands is perhaps moving on to love and relationship the ace of wands is one of the best cards that you can get in terms of love it can definitely be the beginning of a new relationship um an awesome new relationship coming your way if you're already in a relationship, it's about it, you know, getting better and experiencing some sort of new beginning still, you know, something will be different and better and just amazing, passionate, um, exciting. So I'm not going to stay on that too long. Also for me, it's an indication of sex and we saw sex in the dice, but when I talk about getting the wand... <laughs> somebody might get the wand um this week maybe it'll be unexpected because the fire energies can often be things that come in like really suddenly like just unexpectedly like a surprise especially if it's brought on by something like jupiter which it can be i forgot jupiter has a major transit this week i forgot i almost maybe didn't wasn't going to mention it um jupiter enters aquarius well it will be for some time, I'm pretty sure, on April 6th. Um, yeah, this is exciting. Anyway, moving on to the Nine of Pentacles and our physical health. So this is a really positive card. Um, it's about feeling, you know, like a sense of like vitality and um, positivity, hopeful about the future, open-minded, optimistic, if we're waiting for test results, um, they usually come back in our favor. Maybe you just took a COVID test and, you know, or some other kind of tests. And if positive is good, then it'll be positive. If negative is good, then it'll be negative. You know, some things that like a pregnancy test, for example, right? Some of you might want it to be positive. 
So whatever is positive as in, yes, this is good, is, is um, those will be positive. And if negative is what's good, then negative. Um, what else do I want to say about this? Uh, it, it, it's greatly about... I mean, a few minutes ago, I said, I think, therefore, I am. I think it was Renee Descartes' birthday yesterday, actually, too, um, who is who coined that phrase originally uh, in, like, Latin or something, I think, uh, <laughs> a million years ago. Um, but this is really about this this card, the message, our, our thoughts having a huge effect on our health. And the words we speak over ourselves. And it's funny too, because I just posted something like yesterday on Facebook with this Matt Gates um, case, the congressman from Florida that's being investigated by the FBI. Uh, not long ago, I had seen like in the news where he was, you know, being a, a jerk and making fun of somebody else. Um, like if he ever ended up in, with a scandal. He wanted the scandal to be called Gatesgate. And I had posted like, you never speak like that kind of stuff over yourself, like negativity. Like, why would you be putting yourself and in scandal into the air? Now he's in, now he has a scandal. He can name it Gatesgate or he can name it whatever he wants to, but the, he's definitely involved in a scandal now. And um, so it's like that, like, be careful what you cause your health to be through your words or your thoughts. But it's um, it's of, other than that, um, it's overall, it is a positive card. And last but not least, spirituality and the Ten of Swords. Um, so this is about letting go of a belief, like a deeply held spiritual belief um, or ideology or tradition or something that has really been in our way. And I'm thinking for some, and, and this is taking me back to that, that world that I was saying something's been in our way and it's prevented us from moving forward. And that's why we're, we, we're able to revisit the situation now. So if it was a relationship, for example, um, you know, maybe you were married and even if the marriage was miserable, maybe you held on to this belief that divorce is wrong. I mean, there are people who feel this way, right? Just, this is an example. And so... You know, you're like, I got to stick out this horrible marriage. And maybe you're deciding now, I'm letting go of that belief. It doesn't make sense. I've decided it doesn't make sense. And I deserve to be happy. And my mate deserves to be happy. And so I'm ending this. And that's going to allow me to move into a new space spiritually, right? That I'm, That's growth for me as an individual. That was just an example that had to do with romance, Um because of the page of wands and now the ace of wands in the position of love and, and relationship. But it can be with any number of things that something that we hold dear that has been blocking us from moving forward in some aspect of our life. Like at a spiritual level, at our core, we had we held on to some belief very deeply, very tightly. And it's been an obstacle. It's been a hindrance. You know, it hasn't been... Um, good for us. What was I seeing? There was something else recently um, that had to do with religiosity or spirituality. With this kind of scenario, this kind of thing came up. I don't remember what it was, but I think you guys understand what I'm saying anyway, right? I'm going to clarify these further or pull six additional cards from my Mary Magdalene deck. And this is a deck that I used for recently for the... Um, Full Moon and Libra deck, a deck that I owned and like forgot that I owned and remembered it right before I started the Full Moon and Libra reading. Like, oh, I have those cards that have cards like Crucifixion and the Prophet. It's very, yeah, it's very Easter. It's very Resurrection. So I used them. Everybody loved them. And then I was asked, could I use them in my dailies? And I've been using them. I said, well, at least if no, no other time, at least this week, yes, absolutely I can. So I've been using them. And then I said, you know what? Let's use them in the general as well um, to clarify. And we'll see. Maybe I'll use them in the love reading too. Um, sex, sacred sexuality is the overall energy. And... I think that goes nicely with the two of wands. Okay? And this is about a sacred relationship as it relates to love and relationships. 
um, a spiritual relationship, perhaps a twin flame relationship, a divine union. And that is the kind of um, sex that will be experienced, this or sacred sexuality. And this kind of uh, intimacy is what would be experienced between partners like that. So joining the page of pentacles in reverse in the position of our greatest focus um, or card representing us this week, we have guardian angel. So there's like support here. Even though we're distracted, we can't keep our mind and stuff on our work um, or on our partner, our relationship, we're disinterested. Um, this, this, our guides, our ancestors, our guardian angel are not going to allow us to get like lost, right? There's going to be support there. There's going to be help there to prevent us from going off the deep end and ending up in a bad situation. Um, close friends, family members, co-workers, romantic interests, romantic partners. We have serendipity. So a serendipitous moment, experience, like you're in the right place at the right time. You meet the right person. You bump into somebody. You get a sign. You get a, you know some sort of experience, some sort of synchronicity. Something happens in just exactly as it's meant to. Divine order, perfect timing, and it's of great benefit to you. Serendipity. Work and finance. Divine order. Didn't I just use the word divine order? It's like everything is happening as it should. You, again, you've been out of work. Don't worry. You need more money. Don't worry. You ask for it. You know, or something's coming. Somebody's going to support you. Somebody's going to help you. Everything is happening just as it should in your work and finances right now or this week too. Love and relationship. Interesting. Saint Sinner. I have to read this card aloud to see. I mean, I can definitely tell you um, my feelings on it in terms of in, in, you know, intuitively and um, how that would relate to love and relationship. But I'm intrigued by what the um, meaning in the book might be in this placement. You know, or if if there if there is anything in the book about love at all, so I'll I'll read that one and I'll share my my thoughts as well. Um, uh, physical health, we have transformation. So, like I was talking about, you being sort of in charge of your health this week, um, in terms of the your thoughts. The words you speak of yourself, what actions you're willing to take, doing some exercise, watching for balance. Am I eating too much? Am I eating not, not enough? Am I sleeping too much? Am I sleeping not enough? You will be responsible for transforming yourself into, or, or your health into the health you want to have. Um, and then spirituality, joining the Ten of Swords. We have the matrix. How perfect is that for spirituality? The matrix is being, is falling apart. More people are being able to see uh, what, what's really, what's really real. And maybe that's why you let go of some sort of long heard, long held belief, like the 10 of swords suggests you will, because you have seen the real deal now, but I'm, I'm cool with reading that one too. Um, if people would like. How will I know if people will like? Well, I won't, but I'll probably just read it anyway. Uh, first saint or sinner, though. The assumptions that you're making about another person or event could turn out to be completely wrong. So this is in love and relationship. Realize that for every theory, there's a contradicting and opposing one. There may be more to the situation than first meets the eye. You are being advised to keep an open mind and heart. Oh, this is totally about love. <laughs> all is not necessarily the way it seems. Remember also that often the judgments we make about others are also judgments that we make about ourselves, right? We, we um, reflect into the world. 
you will not find peace and fulfillment while holding an I'm right and they're wrong attitude. Accept that there is no single truth that applies universally and all things will become clearer. So you may have feelings, like I said, about um, this love interest, especially if it's somebody with whom you were dealing before. Like if you're picking up something from the past, let's finish what we started. You may have some preconceived notions and maybe because of the time that's passed, their experiences, your experiences, it might not be what you think or, you know, what it seems. So it's, it's asking that we have an open mind and an open heart, like it said, and allow things to unfold. Um, there's a Jill Scott song. She says, you ain't no saint. We all are sinners. Oh, uh, long walk. It's a long walk. We all of sinners, but you put your good foot down and make yourself a winner, I think. I respect that. Man, you're so fat. <laughs> and you're humble plus supreme, I think is the line. I can't think of any more. But the song is um, A Long Walk by Jill Scott. You want to listen to it. And The Matrix. Let's see what The Matrix is about. Trying to figure out why certain things happen is like attempting to piece together a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle while only having a few pieces of the puzzle in your possession. You can't understand the present situation using the logic of your finite mind, right? You need some bigger, greater, um, more open minded, right? A, a greater, higher spirituality. Just know that a bigger picture exists even though it's not possible for you to see it at this time. Trust for all that is happening is an act of love. Ultimately, you will discover the blessing. Have patience. Like an earth sign. Remember I was saying, take your time in the relationship. Let it develop. Earth signs are good with that. They're grounded. I like how these cards like tie everything together. You'll look back on this period of your life and be thankful for all that is occurring now. Why? Because it's in divine order. Yep. I'll pull one additional one for each archetype as advice. For the masculine, your card is... The little children. Again. Little children was your card in the um, Libra full moon reading. And for the feminine card is the real you no um fake in the funk and i think it might go with this saint or sinner thing like you know in terms of like a who are you to judge and you know like a lot of times the the people for example religious people um often have like the worst behaviors but have no problem like judging other people so this is about being the real you, like in a fearless way and in an honest way and I'm allowing other people to be the real them too. And Little Children is actually about the same thing. Um, it's called Little Children, as I recall, because I read this last, last week when I did the um, Libra Full Moon reading. It's called Little Children because little children don't have like preconceived notions about people and things, right? They're, they're, innocent and their minds are open and they give people a chance um, and they give themselves a chance and they take risks. Um, you know, they have open hearts, they have open minds and, and they don't judge. They don't, they're not hate filled. All that stuff is taught. So this is telling you the same thing I just told the feminine to be honest, to be true to yourself, to be a genuine person. Um, keep it real. Judge not, lest ye be judged. And if you can do that, you should have a good week. Now, if you'd like to stick around, I'm going to go over. My laptop is here closed. Um, um, go over what is going on other than that this week. I think on the Christian calendar, I just signed in. Oh, see, <laughs> I just signed in, as you heard. Um, 
I think on the Christian calendar, there's only that I would care to mention. Um, the, the first day for which this reading is, Sunday, April 4th, is Easter Sunday, of course. So again, the resurrection. And um, every day thereafter, all this week, is what they call an octave of Easter. But we're not going to talk about that. Um, similarly, on the Hebrew or Jewish calendar, every day um, <laughs> this week is either part of Passover, a continuation of Passover, and or the counting of the Omer. I talked about that last week, and it goes on for 49 days, as I mentioned then. There is nothing that I would speak of on the Islamic calendar until, the, I think, the 25th is the first day of Ramadan. Well, also, now that I think about it, the 20, April 22nd is one of the days on which um, some people say Muhammad was born. Um, so we can talk about that then. But also, of course, in, uh, with accordance to the Islamic or Muslim calendar, his, uh, the Prophet's birthday is normally celebrated later in the year, like November. I think it's a little early this month, this year rather. Not this early, not April. I think it's a little early, like October maybe this year, but I don't recall um, off the top of my head. Long story short, there's nothing to talk about on the Islamic calendar, the Hebrew calendar, or the Christian calendar. So I'm going to the planetary calendar and let's see what's up there. So this reading is for the 4th through the 10th. Um, on the 4th at 6.02 a.m. we'll experience the last quarter moon at 14 degrees Capricorn. Then on the 6th at 5.36 p.m. Jupiter will be semi-square Chiron. But I'm pretty sure Jupiter will also be entering Aquarius um, for like a year-long transit, and I don't see that here. But it does show, however, that uh, when it's semi-square Chiron, it will be um, at 22 degrees Aquar Aquarius, and Chiron will be at 22 degrees, I mean, um, yeah, Chiron will be at 22 degrees Aries. So it will be in Aquarius. I th yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the day that it moves in. And it's a big transit, so I'm not sure why uh, I didn't have it here on this list. Anyway, April 9th at 10.57 p.m., Saturn will be trying the true node, which, of course, is Gemini currently. Saturn will be uh, at 12 degrees Aquarius. And Gemini will be at 12, I mean, the true node will also be 12 degrees Gemini. And that's it for the week. That's it for the week. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the reading. Please do like, share, subscribe, comment. Uh, I try to respond to all the comments. And I encourage you to hit both the subscribe button and the bell button when subscribing so that we can all hope and pray that you receive your notifications. Um, most people don't because my channel stays shadow banned because I talk about stuff like this and get and do accurate readings. And so they like to promote, <laughs> um, you know, the devil likes to promote, promote the phony stuff. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and I will be back um, soon. I was going to say next week. No, soon with the love reading. Namaste.